Hi folks, um, you've seen this image once before, um, probably about four months ago, and we did a full process on this image, it belongs to one of my patrons, Gary, and uh, yeah, but, you know, sometimes, mm, you know, you might be on location, you might be away in a different country, you've only got a little laptop, etc, etc, and, you know, you might not be in any way shape or form fit for a big workflow on an image and you want to get an image out on perhaps social media or something like that and one of the main um, problems with this image we've got it open up in Lightroom is here and if we take it up to a four to one view you can see we've just got the start of a halo sharpening halo now if we look at the foreground of the image, yeah, I, let's come down to here and go to a one-to-one -one view. You can see it's sharp, but it could be sharper. So we want to add a bit more sharpening to it. But of course, that's just going to make that halo worse. And inside of Lightroom, you know, we've got various options to sort of control halos. And the quickest option is to bring the radius down to zero and more importantly bring the detail down to zero. Now you can see that the halo is gone but now we've got no sharpening on the foreground or next to no sharpening on the foreground. So what I want to do is just show you a quick way of getting rid of halos and you can you can use this on small JPEGs as well that you've, you know, you've produced and maybe they've just got a bit of a sharpening halo on in, in one particular area and uh, you can very easily use this method to go and clean that halo up without having to go to the time and mither of reprocessing the image. So we best get on. and. I'm just going to scoop this image over into Photoshop. Well, I've already got it open in Photoshop. And if we take it up to a 100% view, and then we sort of scoop down here and we blow it up some more, now you can see the full effect of the sharpening halo that we've already got. Now then, if we were to do anything else sharpening wise to this image without separating the sky from the, the actual foreground as you'll see in the full process video um, that I said, as I said I did about four months ago and I'll put a link to it up here um, without going to the time and miser of doing that if you add any more sharpening to this image globally across it all you're going to do is exacerbate this halo and the sharpening that is already applied to create this halo is really only affecting the what you might term high frequency detail so this is in the foreground in the land and we've got low frequency detail in the sky and of course we've got a dark foreground dark landscape against a quite pale uh, lighter sky so we've got a high contrast boundary which separates low frequency detail from high frequency detail and that's where you start to see sharpening halos so what I'm going to do is show you a quick and dirty way uh, but it's very effective of getting rid of sharpening halos and so it's funny this because I put a, a, a video up for my patrons um, a couple of weeks ago on using this particular blend mode and nobody really cottoned on to how else you could use it and the blend mode I'm talking about is this one which we'll go to in a second so I'm just going to add a new empty layer and I'm going to switch this into the darker color blend mode and what we'll do is we'll rename this layer and we'll call this light halo and I'm actually going to 
do another one called believe it or believe it not dark halo and we're going to put that in the lighter color blend mode but we're going to turn that off for a moment and we'll come back and we'll activate this lighter halo or light halo layer and the thing is the whenever you get too much sharpening across a high contrast boundary we always get a light edge and a dark edge the dark edge is darker than the area that it's separating and the light edge is lighter than the area that it's separating so it all gets a little bit weird but from a halo point of view it's always the light halo which gets more readily noticed and so what we'll do is we'll go and cure this light halo and all we're going to do is in this new empty layer that is in the darker color blend mode so the darker color blend mode combats the light uh, halo and we're just going to get our clone stamp tool and we're going to just lift it up a little bit and i'll take the opacity up to a hundred percent just for quickness and what we want to do is make sure we've got sample current and below selected and we also need to have aligned checked and all i'm going to do is just hold down the out key sample from there come to here and I can be quite slapdash about this. And look, I am painting away that white halo. But it is not affecting, we'll just come over here and resample. It's not affecting any of the other pixels underneath the brush. All it's doing is affecting the pixels that are lighter than the color that we've selected with the clone stamp tool selector so i'm not going to go whizzing all across this image now but you can see i'm sure by now that that is a very very effective way of getting rid of light sharpening halos now we can also by a reverse sort of process go and get rid of dark halos by using a new empty layer in the lighter color blend mode however there is a slight caveat to this it doesn't always work and seeing as you're trying to dumb down this darker or this darkening of the uh, boundary that you can see here you've got to be very careful where you sample from and you've got to be very careful how you apply it because you will start to get repeated patterns so i suggest you go in with a smaller brush and we drop the opacity to somewhere between 40 and 50 percent and we are we must be prepared to do sort of multiple samplings but i'm just going to come in here and just sample from in there and then just paint away and i'm not after removing it i'm just after dumbing it down just a little bit but as i said before you've got to be very careful where you're sampling from and so we'll just come in there and we will just ease that dark edge off a little bit like that as i said it doesn't always work but if you can just dumb it down a little bit it can make the world of difference because don't forget we're not actually removing the sharpening from the edge if we remove too much of that dark halo we will start to remove sharpening from the edge and what we're trying to do is maintain edge sharpness without the edge artifact and as i said before earlier on when, I, when we started this video the the actual big nasty isn't the dark halo usually it's the light halo and as you can see we've got a very good method of getting rid of the light halo with this empty layer and the clone stamp tool set in the darker color blend mode so here we've got our halo or our light halo and there you can see it's gone so i hope that's proved a bit useful for you guys it's just a simple way to 
remove sharpening halos so you don't in any other future sharpening that you put on an image you don't exacerbate the main problem halo which is always the one which exists between areas of high frequency detail and areas of low frequency detail when we've got a high contrast boundary so there you go hope that's proved useful for you hope you've enjoyed that and uh, i shall see you in the next video and oh by the way i was having quite a blast a couple of weeks ago because loads of you were sending me questions now funnily enough you've all stopped so please 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 send me some questions in either ask questions in the comments below on the videos or send it me by email or whatever just keep asking me questions guys because it helps me decide what to do the next video on okay so until the next time stay safe stay well keep taking the pictures and uh, i shall see you very soon to root